So hello and welcome to another session of Talk with ECM. My name is Elizabeth and we're talking today about the roadmap to success. So there it is. We have some questions and things we want to talk about today. This discussion is for people who have been through the course already. So people who worked through it, have done the action steps, and now it's time to talk about it. We have only one rule, but as there's only one person here today, we probably won't need this rule, and that's the 10 seconds rule. I'll say this rule now in case others come along later. When you see the sign, 10 seconds, that means please finish off your thoughts. I won't cut you so quickly, but please finish what you're thinking, and then let's give someone else a chance to speak as well so everyone gets a turn. That's the only rule today. So without further ado, let's get started. Right now I have one guest, so please introduce yourself. Hello? Sid? Can you hear me? Oh dear. Are you still here? Hello? Hmm, it seems as if I can't hear him. I could hear him easily before. So I guess I'll say a little bit more about myself and the course until he comes back. Unless... Ah, there you are. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? yourself okay uh, my name is Said Said uh, that's the Saeed. correct pronunciation yes. Thank Saeed you. yes uh, I'm from Algeria welcome uh, I'm an English teacher in middle school and uh, now I'm preparing uh, for the first certificate in English that's excellent. Wow, that's great. Now, is there a specific exam that you will take for that certificate? Or is it a whole process? Uh, no, I'm preparing just uh, alone, self-study, not... Uh, okay, by self-study. Okay, great. Uh, then I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about the course. So the first one, introduce yourself. We're finished. So now please read your roadmap. What did you write down for your roadmap? I think uh, my uh, roadmap is uh, to achieve my, uh, my goal, uh, which is uh, to get a high score in uh, the first certificate in English. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I, uh, I devote uh, one hour per day to, uh, to practice my English and to work on my English. That's great. So you're going to devote one hour per day? Yes. To reach the certificate. Now, when will, you, when will you get the certificate or when is the deadline? Uh, I think I will pass this exam uh, next uh, March. Next March. Because, okay. Yeah. So you have some time yes. to prepare yourself. And if you do one hour per day, that sounds like a great, a great way. That's a great roadmap. I really like that. So in this course, let's do question number three. In this course, what did you learn? What new things did you find in this course? Uh, you mean that uh, the emails that you have sent uh, to us? Exactly. Yes. Uh, okay. I learned how to define uh, how did uh, to the uh, to define success. How uh, which steps that I should follow in order to, to achieve my goal. And that's great. Is it helpful for you? Yes, of course, it's helpful. That's great. That's great. So you have a clearer idea of what exactly you want. What exactly your goal is. And as you said, the steps to get there. 
Yes. Yeah, maybe at the beginning you knew, yes, I want the first certificate, but how to get there. Now you have a clear idea. You want to spend one hour per day, and you might even have some ideas of what exactly you want to do with that hour as well, I guess. Yes, I try to, uh, to follow the, some lessons uh, which are talking about uh, the first certificate in English. I read some books and uh, how the exams uh, work. And... Very smart. Very smart indeed. So I want to ask you the next question about the action steps. Each day, as you said, I gave you an email. I also gave you action steps each day. Tell me about them. I think uh, the actions uh, has relation with the road uh, map. Uh, in order to achieve these goals, I have to, uh, to follow these actions. Mm -hmm. Were there some that were difficult or easy or were they all the same? No, no, they are not difficult. Okay. They are, they are easy. They're easy. Yes. Can you give an example of one you found helpful? Which one did you find most helpful? I think uh, how to make uh, uh, how to how to say I think making a plan and uh, following the plan that uh, the plan that I should follow in order to achieve my goal. So that was the most helpful one. Yes. That's great. I'm really glad that helped you. I'm really glad. It sounds like you're very motivated and very clear about what you want to do. I'm so hopeful about that yes, and happy. So much. <laughs> yeah. So those are my main questions for you. Do you have any questions for me? Or thoughts you want to share? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, one, uh, one I read, for example, uh, I, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not difficult. It's easy for me to, to speak. And, uh, but when I hear or listen to native speakers, uh, I don't understand them. It's, it's difficult for me. And I, I, I understand, but uh, most... Sometimes I can't understand, for example, uh, when I watch movies or... Uh, but when I talk to you now, I understand each word that you say. Yeah. So this is, this is clearer for you, this is easy, but movies are not so clear, maybe. Yes. Okay. And now, you mentioned that you're an English teacher. Do you have many opportunities in your daily life to talk in English with other people? Besides no, the, students. No, there is uh, no opportunity. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So generally, you're the teacher, but you're not challenged very often. Yes. Aha, uh -huh, that's an interesting situation. And it sounds like you want to be challenged. Yes, of course. Yes, you want to improve your English and understand movies, understand yes. all the words. Yes. Hmm, good. Yeah, so it does sound like you need to focus on listening skills. The listening skills. What kind of practice do you do now to improve your listening? I, I uh, just listen to, uh, for example, to, uh, there is a website which, uh, which is called uh, Yoglish. I think you know that uh, website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you choose a word and you will... Uh, uh, this website will give you uh, all the videos which has got this word uh, in English and uh, and then you have a whole lot of videos and yes. practice listening yes good I think that's really good that's a really good method just more and more listening one thing one thing I can recommend for you as you said some things for you are easy to understand. Yes. I mean, you have a, a certain level of English, it's easy for you to understand me, for example. Yes. But there are also things that aren't easy to understand. 
like maybe movies or news clips, I suggest that you take one video or one movie or even one section of a movie, just one piece, something yeah. that's very difficult for you to understand. Yeah. And I suggest that you watch it five times. The first time, only listen. When it's over, just think, hmm, okay, what did I hear? Did I hear some words? Did I hear anything? Maybe I didn't understand any words, but I can guess they're fighting. Maybe I can just guess that from the face and the, the knife, ah, uh. whatever it is. So write it down. Whatever you can catch, write it down. Okay, turn your paper over, listen the second time. Maybe you catch a little more. Again, write it down. Turn the paper over. Don't look at it at the same time. Uh. Listen again. I would do that five times. No, four times. Do it four times. It's not so exact. You can do it how many times you want. Four times and see how much information you can get listening to the same thing over and over. Maybe you can get some words, some sentences, some ideas. And then if you're able to find it, and this is the best, if you can find the text or a subtitle, read it and compare it with what you wrote down. Yes. And then listen the fifth time or the last time when you already know what they say and see if you can hear it. I challenge you to use this kind of thing just to train your ears. I think of it like a muscle. Uh. And if you've ever done fitness or sports, the first time you try and lift a heavy weight, it's the first time you can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. Look at that. So tiny. I can't do it. No way. So I have to train slowly, slowly, piece by piece. And then we can work up to it. Yes. Thank you so much for the, uh, this advice. Yeah. Try it. Yes. I'll try it. And let me know if it helps. I would yes, love I'll, to hear it. Yeah. Yes. I'll do it. That's great. Super. I also have um, a second recommendation for you. So the first it's to help you train your listening because that was a question you had and I really want to help you with that. The second suggestion, I just made, I published an article and I made a test prep kit and I'm going to put a link. Hmm, where will I put the link? I'll send you the link by email. Okay. Yeah. I'll send you the link by email and it's a, it's an article. It's about the eyelids exam, which is different than what you're doing. I understand that it's different, mm -hmm. but some of the skills are the same. I mean, it's still English, right? Yes. Yes. Right. So I suggest you read the article and then there's a free download for the test prep kit. So I'll send you that and you can see if that helps as well. Yes, I would. That's great. Any more questions for me? No, I think this is uh, my uh, my problem. What? Listening, listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it your problem or your opportunity to improve? Uh, I think opportunity to improve now. Yeah. Yeah, it's an opportunity. I mean. We all need to learn. Even I had to learn. I wasn't born speaking English, even though that's my first language. I still had to learn. Uh, practice, practice, practice. Practice. Yeah. Yes, I think uh, also uh, problems in idioms and uh, and phrasal verbs. Mm-hmm. Yes. Idioms and phrasal verbs. Uh, yes. Yes, those are really important to practice as well. And I've seen some really good lists and, and exercises that are available mm. online, but, but I don't have any products for that yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> yes. Uh, I would like also to, uh, to ask you about, uh, for example, when I, when I uh, watch uh, some videos which talking about teaching English and uh, I think that they are talking uh, about uh, just uh, limited numbers of, uh, of pupils or students, just uh, 12 or 15. But uh, in our schools, we have got, for example, 35 
right. pupils, sometimes 40. And it's, it's very difficult uh, how to motivate learners to, uh, to follow you. And, uh, and you said you teach middle school, is that correct? Middle school, yes. So how old are your students? Uh, they are 11 to, uh, to 15, mm -hmm. or six, to 16. That's another challenge, isn't it? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you have such a large group. And the ages, they're interested in a lot of things. We'll say it that way. They're interested in the sound of the bird outside the window. They're interested in what their friend's doing across the... Yes, of room. course. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They look, they, uh, they look uh, through the windows in order to see what the, the headmaster is doing. What, uh... Yes. And you say, look, look at this verb, this verb. <laughs> Right. So, but but I, I hear what you say uh, about the websites and suggestions you find online. It's often for smaller groups, 10, 12, even 20 students is very different than what you have in your classroom. Yes. And so you probably find some challenges. Let me see if I can get more light. Yeah. So you probably have some challenges keeping the attention of the students and engaging them yes. and talk i mean if they all talk at once <laughs> that would be chaos <laughs> have you have you encouraged to how, what do you activities do you use in your classroom uh in fact we have got uh, a book that we we must follow okay uh, and uh, we have got uh, we always uh, start a, a file or profile or, uh, with uh, listening, mm -hmm. then we have got reading, then we have got practice uh, grammar uh, that we have seen in this file. Then uh, goes to uh, to uh, we go to writing. Okay. Uh, so we close this uh, the the file with writing. So there's not so much for students giving presentations or. No, no. We have got just uh, three hours per week. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't get much chance to practice or yes, present. No yes. Right. So you have a lot of pressure as well. Yes, of course. Hmm. That's one thing I really like to use in the courses that I teach is I like to put more attention on the students and give more opportunity for the students to speak either in group work but then there's always the challenge to make sure they're using English and not their mother tongue. Uh. <laughs> but group work, presentations, um, where they present material, they teach a grammar skill. Because often I find if someone can teach something, they have to really know it. But it sounds like your school, you have a lot of restrictions and limitations. You have to use this book you have to cover these materials. How much flexibility do you have? Uh, I think uh, uh, there is fle flexibility. Uh, I, I shouldn't, uh, or I mustn't not, uh, I mustn't uh, follow this uh, book blindly. Mm -hmm. I have to choose which activity that, uh, that suits my, uh, my pupils, my, uh, their needs, the... Uh, do you have much opportunity for group work? Because with such a large group, it's hard, but maybe groups of four students together? Yes, yes. Sometimes I give them an activity and I, I ask uh, my pupils to, to do it together. The, the, and one of them uh, say uh, the answer. Uh, and does that work well? Sometimes. Okay. Mm. So what, do you know why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't? I think the most uh, problem is how to engage learners to... <laughs> yes. This is the most problem, yeah. most difficult problem. Did you find anything from the roadmap to success that engaged you? What helped you feel engaged in this course? Uh, yes, I benefit to myself, but uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's difficult to, to apply uh, many things in, in the class. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a challenge to find something, especially something that reaches 40 pupils at the same time. Yes. 
to catch one or two mm. is great. Yes. To catch five is really good. To catch mm. 10 is amazing. But to catch everyone, that's a challenge. Yes. That's a real challenge. I have to agree. Hmm. Uh, have you taught, uh, for example, large groups like that? Yes, I did. Actually, I taught um, quite large groups in Taiwan and China both at a university level and also at a middle school level, a middle uh, school and high school level. Yes. And they were, like you said, 40 students at the same time. It was really a challenge, but I had quite a bit of flexibility and I encouraged the students, I would give them perhaps different challenges. Sometimes it was a vocabulary word list or certain grammar structures, list something that they must include in their performance. That I found the when they made the plays and the skits, that was the most engaging for them. They were so clever and came up with such great ideas. And they would get points for how many of the items on the list they could fit in, in a meaningful way into their performance. For example, if I had a vocabulary list and they made a school scene and the teacher just said, here's your vocabulary list and says the words, no points for that. <laughs> That's not very clever, but if they put it into sentences, I made it very engaging. And I also encouraged the other students who weren't presenting, because it was small groups, they had to keep track of the score. How many words did they hear? Or how many grammatical structures did they hear? So that was a challenge for them as an audience as well. Uh, good. Yeah. And of course, to, to put the vocabulary into their skit and memorize it and prepare it, they had to understand the meaning. Right. Yeah. So that was, that was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed that. But it doesn't always fit into the school structure. It depends on what you're able to do. Yeah. What else did we do? Because we didn't do that the whole time. What other things did we do? Did presentations. It's hmm. a good question. And I'm sure you have had some successful days that you can share some ideas with me. What has been a really good successful day for you with your students? Uh, the successful thing? Mm -hmm. Maybe one day when you said, yes, that's it. That's why I'm a teacher, exactly for that. Sometimes, uh, for example, for uh, guided uh, writing, uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit easy for them because they, uh, they follow model, for example. They have got a model to follow. So they can work with this model, they, uh, they, uh, they do well. That's great. And they can yeah. add their own touch, yes. their own flavor to it. Yes. Yeah, that's a great way to do it, to give a good, clear model. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a really good idea. Good. Well, I look at the time and we just have a few minutes left. Any last questions or closing words you'd like to say? Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like just to say that uh, thank you so much for your uh, time and I benefit uh, a lot from you and uh, it's good experience for me. That's wonderful. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. And if you can recommend this course or give me more ideas of what's helpful for you, I would appreciate that. Mm. Yes. Great. And yeah, I'm really thankful that you went through the course and I'm thankful you came to this session. I know that time is not perfect for everyone, which makes it a challenge for some people to join me, but I'm really glad you were here. Yes, yeah. for, exa for example, uh, last uh, Friday, uh, I was uh, here in front of my computer, but uh, I think there was a problem uh, from you. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's the problem, but uh, you make it on uh, Saturday. Yes. But, uh, yes. Uh, but I, yes, I, I in uh, on Saturday, uh, I study in university. Uh -huh. I'm preparing for a master degree in marketing. 
Wow. And a massive, wow. You're yeah. a very ambitious person. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Super. Well, thank you again for your time. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. And all the best for using your roadmap. Yes. For success. Thank I you hope so to much. hear good news in March. Yes. Have a nice time. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.